children, we now begin inverse trigonometric functions. We had already studied a general function and its inverse. But inverse trigonometric functions, they need special attention from a mathematics learner because to study inverse trigonometric function with full vigor is a big challenge and it requires a purely analytical approach. Almost all results are true in a given interval only. These intervals are discovered when we attempt to prove these results methodically. Unfortunately, the results given in most of the books are not true for all the values within the domain. In any such crisis, we may say that LHS is one of the values of RHS or vice versa. For instance, a very common result, 2 sine inverse x, sine inverse 2x under root 1 minus x square. Even this result is not true unless the proper uh, range for x is specified. For instance, it is not even true for x is equal to 1. For x is equal to 1, LHS will be sine inverse 1 uh, uh, is pi by 2, so LHS is pi. On the contrary, RHS is 0. Anyway, we will be doing inverse function with full details and with full rigor. And for that, we have to define them properly. We have to choose a proper range. And after which, after uh, we decide that this is the range, we can't change it, then we have to adjust all the formulas accordingly. So let us now define inverse trigonometric functions. Suppose mod a is less than or equal to 1 and sin x is equal to a. So you know there are infinite values of x for which sin x is equal to this given quantity which lies in the closed interval minus 1, 1. So which one must we choose? So geometrically we can say the value which is nearest to origin must be chosen to give a value to sine inverse A. We write x is equal to sine inverse A. Now this should have only one value. So sine inverse A should have one value only. So, we choose the value which is nearest to origin in case of sine. So, just see the graph of sine and suppose A is half. So, if A is half, this is the graph of sine and half means, you know, pi by 6, sine pi by 6 is half. So you see, sine pi by 6 is half, rule of x is being played by pi by 6, rule of a is being played by half. Now there are other values also, whose sine is half. This is the value 5 pi by 6. Then here there is a value. Then here there is a value. There is a value here also, 2 pi plus pi by 6. And then 2 pi plus 5 pi by 6. Which value is nearest to origin? pi by 6. So thus sine inverse half is equal to pi by 6 and uh, the reason for giving this value you know we have explicitly and clearly defined that the value which is nearest to origin should denote sine inverse half. And from here itself sine inverse minus half is also evident. You see that minus pi by 6 is the nearest angle or real number whose sine is minus half. Though there are a infinitely many values of x for which sine x is minus half, this is the value, then this is the value, this value is 7 pi by 6, and this value is, I think, 11 pi by 6, and then this value is again 
you know it will be minus pi plus pi by 6 that is minus 5 pi by 6 and so on but this is this has an advantage of being nearest to origin so sine inverse minus half is minus pi by 6 and thus we can feel from the graph that sine inverse of any positive number of course the positive number is from 0 to 1 will be 0 to pi by 2 and then sine inverse of any negative quantity will be from minus pi by 2 to 0. Sine inverse positive quantity is obtained by, I mean, just by, uh, you can say memory, that's for instance, sine inverse 1 by root 2 is pi by 4, and the minus value is obtained by attaching minus to the corresponding plus case. What I mean to say, suppose you want sine inverse of minus 1 by root 2, so what is the, I mean, remove this minus, so it is pi by 4. So this should be taken as minus pi by 4. This is the way to write a sine inverse of a negative number. But so cos inverse causes a lot of difficulties. I mean, suppose cos x is equal to a, and as you know from elementary inverse function, that x is equal to cos inverse a. Now, what should be this value? Let us examine the graph of cos. This is the graph of cos. This is pi by 2. This is pi. This is 3 pi by 2. This is minus pi by 2. Now, suppose cos inverse half. So, where are the heights half? This is the height half. This is the height half. Now, both are at, both are equidistant from origin. This is pi by 3. This is minus pi by 3. So both are equidistant from origin. So there is a conflict. There is a lie between pi by 3 and minus pi by 3. But for any practical purpose, you know, any technocrate or any mathematics learner like you must prefer the positive value. Though there are infinite values of cos inverse half, you know, there will be many more values. So, cos inverse half is a value between 0 to pi by 2 only. Or in general, you can say cos inverse any positive number between 0 and 1. Will, uh, it belongs to 0 to pi by 2. Now, what about cos inverse minus half? Cos inverse minus half. You know, the minus half, the first value is here. And this value is 2 pi by 3, after which it is 4 pi by 3. Again, there is a conflict. There is a, uh, I mean, uh, competition between two values, this 2 pi by 3 minus 2 pi by 3. Again, both are equidistant. And, uh, I mean, this equidistant scene will always be there because cos of minus x is cos x. Cos is an even function. So we will prefer this uh, uh, 2 pi by 3 because it is a positive angle. And uh, you can feel from graph that cos inverse of any negative quantity must lie between pi by 2 and pi. So till now, what have we developed? The domain of sine inverse x is all values between minus 1 to 1. Range of sine inverse x is minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. Domain of cos inverse x is again minus 1 to 1. It is defined only for these values. And the ranges should be from 0 to pi. And the reason for choosing this convention I have explained. Tan inverse is quite easy. This is the graph of tan x. Please note that to... Choose the range of tan inverse x. We, we have to draw the graph of tan x. The graph of tan inverse x itself we will discuss in a separate session. See, this is the graph of tan inverse. Uh, sorry, tan x. This is 0, pi by 2, minus pi.